Here are all the tools that you need to be able to draw like this. Welcome back. Easily the question that I get asked the most is, can you please go through all the tools that you use for drawing? So on this table is every single tool that I use to be able to make drawings like these. Keep in mind, artists have their preferences. I know a lot of artists that do what I do that have a lot more tools than this, and I know a lot that have a lot less than this. Personally, these are just the tools that through a lot of trial and error, I found to be the most useful and ones that I constantly return to and use on a daily basis. I broke them down by category. We're gonna go through them left to right. Without further ado, let's begin. So for my charcoal, I use the General's pencils. They're very easy to find. I get my Michaels or Hobby Lobby or Amazon even sometimes. There's three different variations. There's the soft, medium, and hard. These are basically used for filling in medium-sized areas that are black. They aren't good for very tedious, detailed work, but they are good for filling in the shadows that aren't too big, but aren't too small. Between the soft, medium, and hard, I never use the hard. So I'm just gonna put it over here. It's actually, in my opinion, it's so hard that it acts like a graphite pencil, but I do use the soft and medium a lot. I basically use the soft for filling in the background or very black areas that I think I might be taking away later. Now, what I mean by that is some areas like dark hair, for instance, you fill in pitch black first, and then you get the erasers and pull the highlights. If you're gonna be pulling highlights, you wanna be working with charcoal that is easy to pull off, obviously. So that's what I use the soft for. And the medium is for uh, filling in black areas that I don't think I'll be pulling from. Pupils, uh, nostrils, stuff like that. Then we have the generals, charcoal sticks, and sandpaper. Now with this, I create charcoal powder. I'll take one of these general sticks and I'll file it down with the sandpaper to create powder. And what this powder is used for is basically the base tones for everything in the drawing. So how I draw is I will put the base tones down, get all the shading correct, and then the detail goes on top of that with the graphite. So this general's charcoal is basically used for the foundation of the drawing. It's incredibly messy, but it's very necessary. Okay, next up is the graphite pencils. So I use the Faber-Castell 9000 series. It's probably one of the most popular types of graphite pencils. You can also find them pretty much anywhere where art supplies are sold. I think they're just very reliable, good quality, great brand. Now, as far as the shades go, I tend to work lighter because graphite is used for the little details that go on top of the charcoal base tones. So I go 2H, H, B, H, B, and 2B. I don't like to go higher than 2B because at that point you might as well be using charcoal. And I don't go lighter than 2H because I don't think that's necessary. 2H is very light. Yeah, so I take these pencils and anything that is too precise for charcoal to get, we're going with these and layer it on top. It's important because charcoal cannot go on top of graphite. It just doesn't work. So it's important that you put the charcoal down first and then the graphite on top. Also, if any of the charcoal was a little splotchy or just needs refine at all, that's also what this is used for. There are many times whenever you apply charcoal and it's just a little uneven in certain areas. Maybe the paper has a defect and has like a splotch somewhere. Uh, you can go in with these and touch up around to help it blend it in more. That's the type of work you don't want to be doing with charcoal, but with these more precise pencils. Speaking of going in and touching things up, these are the blending tools that I use. So if you've attended any of my live streams or seen any of my videos, you know that these are probably the most used tools I have. These are, I believe they're IPC1 by Dynasty brushes. They're some sort of art, mixed media brush. They were gifted to me by my high school art teacher, shout out Mrs. Watt. I use them for everything. Earlier we talked about the charcoal powder and how that's applied for the base. This is how I apply it. I'll just take it, I'll dip it in, and I will, in circular motions, gradually build those layers up to create the tonal foundations. I got a big one and a small one. So any other brush that I've ever used has been makeup related, but these brushes work wonders and the more, it, it's crazy, the more you beat them up, the better they work. When you buy these, if you look these up, this is not what they look like. Um, mine look very beat up, but they actually blend better this way. So if you want some good brushes, Speaking of very common blending tools, this is just a blending stump. Um, I prefer them on a smaller scale. A lot of people like the bigger ones. I'm not the biggest fan, but it really doesn't matter. I use this for blending mainly graphite. All the little 
skin textures and additional detailing I do with the graphite on top of the charcoal, I think these blend really well. I think this is one of those necessities that every artist needs. Lastly is the recent addition. Um, this is literally just a tissue. You can see how beat up it is. I use this for basically smoothing out the background. This is really good for doing what the brushes can't. The brushes can only blend so smoothly just because of how narrow the tips are. Make sure it's a softer tissue, preferably like Kleenex or something. I mean, it applies it so smoothly and it is another game changer that seems so simple and so dumb, but trust me, if you haven't tried a tissue for blending something really smooth, such as like a blurred background, definitely try this. Okay, next up we got erasers. Now, normally beginners think that erasers are just for fixing mistakes, when that can't be far from the truth. So and most of the time, a lot of the detailing is primarily done with erasers. So when you're working with charcoal, all of the highlights have to be done with erasers and pulling the charcoal off of the paper. So let's start with the most obvious and the most essential one, which is the Tombow Mono Eraser. I mean, I can't stress enough how crucial this is. Hopefully this um, lets you know how important it is. I have five of them and I use all five of them. It's a very precise little eraser that's used for pulling very minute strokes. I wouldn't be able to do half of the detailing I do without it. So when you're pulling these details and you want very defined lines, hard edged erasing in the most precise manner, that's your go-to. And next up, one step down, is the Faber-Castell Perfection 7056. This is an eraser pencil that I think is very slept on. A little more forgiving than the Tombow Mono Eraser. It can get as precise, but the edges aren't as sharp. If you want to pull something that isn't as defined, this is my go-to. Out of everything here, I use this the most. I can't recommend it enough. It's not necessary if you have a mono, but if you want to go the extra step and get something that helps cover the one thing that the mono can't do, it's this right here. Now going on the other side of the mono is the electric eraser. This is pretty self-explanatory. It's an electric eraser that creates very sharp highlights. They're very defined and basically this is only used for those highlights that really pop and stand out amongst the other one. I don't use it for much. I do use it for things like marking my grid, but for the most part, this is only used for the strongest of highlights. I do highly recommend it. I see a lot of artists kind of writing it off as like a hack or like a cheat or something, but don't limit yourself. This covers the other half of what the mono can't do. We have the kneaded eraser. I end up playing with this thing more than using it. Uh, it's fun to play with, but this is really good for those abstract skin textures that are hard to work out in your head and do manually. So what you'll do is you'll mold a more precise edge like that, and then you'll kind of go in and have fun with it, be natural. And what it does is it randomly pulls up spots and looks really good for an organic texture. If you're trying to do a very precise and defined pattern, definitely do not go to this. But if you want something just for the background, it's very light, the foundation of a skin texture, um, I do go to this quite a bit for that kind of stuff. Lastly is this Faber-Castell dust-free eraser. I use this when I'm trying to clear the paper, which is really important because charcoal is so messy and it gets everywhere. You get to a new section, it's already covered in a layer of charcoal that can really mess with everything and make the drawing turn out a different shade that you don't want it. So I usually just go in with this eraser because it's very forgiving and it's very, very good at pulling up all charcoal without damaging the paper. You do not use an electric eraser for that. I ended up damaging the surface of the paper because this is way too strong. In my opinion, this pulls up charcoal a lot better. There you have it. Those are all the eraser tools I use. And I think you can tell that erasing is one of, if not the most important part of the process. Lastly, we have some miscellaneous items. These are white acrylic pens. Now I use these 
at the very end of a drawing, when everything is done, the charcoal is set, I need to bring up some of the highlights. Some people consider this cheating, people that are super pure within the drawing world. Because I'm already using charcoal and graphite, you might as well throw in everything and anything you can to make it look better because why not? I used to use these a lot more than I should have. Now I just use them at the very end to strengthen and emphasize some of the highlights. Everyone knows the Posca, Posca. These are very popular among the internet community. They're really good. I've been using this a lot recently. I also just like using the jelly roll for the smaller highlights. Next up is this color pencil that I use. It's called like poly something. I can't see because it's rubbed off, but it's by Faber Castell and it's basically just a black color pencil that I will use here and there to help strengthen charcoal. It doesn't go well on top of graphite because nothing really goes on top of graphite, like I said. But if charcoal is kind of being a pain and it's blending and taking away and not being as strong as I need it, I will just put this over top because it does look really good and it layers really well with charcoal. Lastly is a tool that I think everyone should have, which is a brush. This is just a really cheap paintbrush that was honestly like a dollar. But for some reason, charcoal doesn't really stick to it. So my advice, find a brush that doesn't really attract charcoal that much and then use it for just um, getting some of those eraser shavings, dust particles out of the way. It's, it's used here and there, but uh, it is very helpful whenever you erase a large section and you don't want to smear it again with the oils on your fingers. So then you just go in with this and brush it off. Lastly, we have sharpeners. I recommend not using the same sharpener for graphite and charcoal because those are very different pencils. So for charcoal, I just use the red generals sharpener that they give you in the box with the pencils. I think it works well enough. I'm not too picky about it. And then for graphite pencils and everything else, this is just a German magnesium sharpener that I found. Uh, I think I found it at Michael's. There you have it. Those are all the tools that I personally use for my drawings. Again, these are just recommendations. You don't have to use these. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments what tools you guys like. Make sure to follow me on Twitch because I go live daily, live streaming this drawing behind me. Make sure to check out my website if you want to see more art and follow me on Instagram and TikTok because I post daily updates there. And consider subscribing if you want to see the next video. Appreciate you being here and hopefully I see you soon.